Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for February the 18th. Our theme is Heart Matters, What Do You Treasure? You can find out more about our ministry from our website, williamsinnovativenetwork.webly.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is Williams Innovative Network, and join us there. Or you can follow us on Twitter, um, Win With Christ. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Jewel W1, and join us there. And I'll put all of that information at the end of the video. Our scriptural theme for the year is found in Matthew 621. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And we're continuing our lesson about Jehu, a careless heart. And today is uh, a careless heart loses out on the plans of God. And again, same scripture. We're just going over 2 King 10, 31. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. We'll jump right into the lesson. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, we ask that you would help us as your children to hear what you're telling to teach us, Lord, because we want to not miss and come short of the glory of God. We want to, to walk in the things that you have for us. We want to walk in our purpose. So, Lord, teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And again, 2 Kings 10, 31 simply says, Yet Jehu was not careful to keep the law of the Lord the God of Israel with all his heart. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, which he had caused Israel to commit. So we've been asking this question all month. What was Jeroboam's sin? And so we talked last week and the week before about some of the things. And so we're continuing. So one of the sins of uh, of Jeroboam was, was doubly tragic in that he had been promised blessings from God if he just followed the path of David. And 1 King uh, 11, 38 says, If you do whatever I command you, walk in obedience to me and do what is right in my eyes by obeying my de decrees and commands as David, my servant, did, I will be with you. Um, I will build you a dynasty as enduring as the one I built for David, and I will give Israel to you. And so, you know, that actually is part of my first point. So a, a careless heart loses God's blessing. So that was doubly bad in the sense that here he had these promises of God that he would keep somebody on his, you know, from his bloodline on the throne if he followed after the things of God, if he followed the path of David. And I think that's key for us. So I'm just as kind of a sad note. You know, a lot of times we want to claim, name and claim and snatch and grab all the promises of the Lord as though there's not a requirement on our part. And that kind of bothers me sometimes because I see people teach like that. Oh, you know, the grace of God just on you. Doesn't matter if you just live in a, you know, a stinky life. Doesn't matter. God's grace and glory is all over you. And that's just it. Don't worry about it. Well, that's not the way that I read the word. And you can't just say, well, this is Old Testament and, and throw it away. You know, if you read the New Testament, there's still are this, you got to do this so that you can receive that. There's these, these stipulations. You're not, see, it, let me make myself clear. I can't make God bless me. I can't buy blessings. But God has got, I have to line up to the provision that God has so that I can receive the blessing. And so it was with Jeroboam. He tells him, I bless you. If you follow the path of David, you have to walk in obedience and, and do what's right in my eyes. And he says, obey my decrees and commands and I will be with you. I will build your dynasty as, as endured. But see, Joe, uh, Jeroboam, you know, the unfortunate thing, he was promised the blessings of God, but he lost it because he was not careful to walk in the ways God required. Now, Jehu was also promised blessings from God. His carelessness, we didn't see God, did, he didn't lose all of his blessings, but somewhere along the line, we believe that the blessings were limited. Why do I say that? Because he only, first of all, he told him he was just going to, somebody would be on his throne for just four generations, number one. He didn't say forever. The second thing is, if you read those scriptures right after that, he said immediately after that, God started to limit the size of the kingdom. See, when God gives you a blessing, when you've been obedient, God doesn't start to limit it. In fact, he expands on it. But because uh, I believe Jehu didn't do all of what he required, he began to diminish his blessing. And if we don't want to lose the blessings or of God, if we don't want to lose them or limit them, we have to be careful about the things of God. We need to hear his instruction and follow them without hesitation or without revision. You and I can't fix God's 
requirement to fit our own lives. And I oftentimes hear people and see people trying to say, well, that's not what that meant. Well, what did it mean? Well, it didn't mean that. It meant, you know, and that's not it. It means what it means. God's instructions are really clear. You got to follow him. You can't just do what you want to do and then think that everything is going to work out for you. The second point is a careless heart turns from God's goodness and brings about his or her own demise. And 1 Kings 13, 34 says, This was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to its downfall and to its destruction from the face of the earth. Wow. See, when we become careless in our walk with God, we set ourselves up for downfall. And I don't care how many messages you hear about grace telling you that God winks at your sins and it'll just go away and he just loves you. And if you just if you just stay in sin, he knows he knows it just it doesn't worry about it. He knows. Well, I'm just going to tell you that ain't true. That is not true. The truth is God requires us to be obedient to his spirit. Now, what grace does do is as you learn, God's grace helps you to stand. But it's still this moving in his direction. He's not giving you grace to continue to sin. He's not giving you grace to move backwards. He's giving you grace to grow, giving you grace to move, to giving you grace to look more like Jesus. And so a careless heart, though, when you're careless and you just disregard the thing, of God, you bring it about your own demise. So I've seen many people blatantly dis, disobey, disobey, I mean, um, disobey God's rules, and then they're heartbroken and going, "Well, God, I'm depressed. Why did you, you know, why do you have me in this place? Um, God didn't put you in that place. You put your own self in that place. God, in His grace and mercy, hopefully He won't do you like He did Jeroboam here and said destruction, you know, from the face of the earth." hopefully and prayerfully thank you that God still has a little mercy on us that he will allow us to get back up. We have to deal with the consequences, but he'll let us move forward. So don't have a careless heart and, and bring about your own destruction. The third point I want to make is a careless heart misses making the, the changes God desires. See, Jehu was told by God to get rid of all idolatry and everything that was contrary to God. Well, he did get rid of, of Baal, the, the, he got rid of um, the prophets, but evidently he missed getting rid of it all because he had to. Otherwise, God would not have, have counted him as having the sins of Jeroboam. And so you and I want to be careful to make sure we are completing God's task as he requires. Now, let me just put that on a personal level. You know, what sins what idolatry are you carrying in your personal life see we think of idolatry as you know some statue that we you know bowing down to but what have you put above everything else? have you put your desire to be married above god meaning that if that opportunity came along some man came along some woman came along you would forget going to church you forget the things of god but you would just be right after that that become an idol if you your addictions your habits are those so important that you don't, you can't change. Those things ha are like your a Jeroboam type of sin. Anything that puts itself above God is really an idol. And you don't want to be caught in a place where you are moving away from doing the things of God because you're seeking other things. Your pursuit of your career. If God is telling you, you know, I want you to go in this way. I want you to spend time with me. But you're so busy trying to do your career that you don't have time for God. Guess what that is? You've made that your idol. You know, maybe, you know, you could be in ministry. You could be in a Christian and have these idols. You can have people that are so concerned with, you know, I got to make this name. You know, I, I got to make sure that my ministry is way up here and I'm all this and I'm all that. So to the point that you'll compromise, you'll do whatever you'll put, you know, going back to a couple of weeks, you'll put people in places and stuff. Why? Because it'll pull and draw what you want. But maybe that's not God, what God is asking you to do. Those are the things that put you in the wrong place. What's our life lesson? A careless heart makes you fall short of receiving the blessings of God. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to miss what God has for me. I want every single thing. I've been telling people lately, I'm greedy. I want everything that God has for me. I don't want to miss doing anything. I don't want to miss receiving anything. And so I want to line myself up 
to what he is calling for me to do so that I can be in the place where I can receive those blessings. And a careless heart, if I was careless, if you were careless, it makes you fall short of receiving those blessings. So let's be careful not to find ourselves in those kind of places. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the lessons that we've had. And we just bind up that spirit of of, of of um, being careless. So we don't want to have a Jeroboam type of sin uh, applied to our lives. So Lord, just have your way in us, change us, fix us, help us to see ourselves so that if it's something that we need to change, you will give us the strength to change it. But we desire to be all that you've called us to be. And again, Lord, there's somebody watching this that don't know you as their savior. We pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would touch a heart, bless a heart so that they would come to that place that they would desire to have a right relationship with you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless.